Charter Local Edition with your host, Dana Cowley. Hello, welcome to Charter Local Edition. Today we're broadcasting in the Capitol Building in Helena. My guest is Senator Ed Buttry. He represents Senate District 11 in Great Falls. Welcome and thank, thank you. you for being with us. My pleasure. You're working very hard on health care. It's one of your areas of expertise. And what are you doing for your constituents this year in, this, in the legislature? Well, a lot of what we're doing this year is budget related and also trying to figure out how the state can quickly adapt to the changes that we have coming from the federal government. So, uh, you know, I represented a very diverse population, a lot of blue collar workers, folks that are really interested in what the changes are going to be with regards to health care, uh, making sure that they have opportunities and access for health care. A lot of my efforts are to actually reduce the cost of health care, make it affordable for more Montanans. How are we able to do that, though? It seems like that's such a challenge. Everyone knows that needs to happen. Right. Um, but nuts and bolts, how can, how can it be? Well, I think as Republicans, uh, you know, what our dissatisfaction is with the Affordable Care Act is it really did nothing to control the costs. We did nothing to encourage competitions between providers, competition between insurers, and to get it to where people were actually fighting for the patient's business. Um, and when you buy a car, you go out and you price multiple models, you look at what different options for those models are, and you're able to make a financial decision. In healthcare, you simply go where they tell you to go, and you find out what it costs you and what it costs the insurance company basically when you get the bill. So we want to open up transparency in healthcare so that people can see actually what the costs of healthcare are, not only what's going to come out of their pocket, but what the total cost of the procedure is. They'll be able to shop and look around and, and look at uh, different providers based on their quality rating, based on their price, and make a decision as to what they should do for their health care needs. There is also in my bills an incentive system that says if you use the system wisely, if you save the insurance system money, that there's going to be both reward for you and there's going to be a large savings pool created which will go to offset the insurance increasing costs for all users of health care. Oh, I think and that's so, got some universal appeal to it. It does. In the last session, we worked really hard on access, making sure that our critical access hospitals were able to stay in existence and that people had access to health care when they truly needed it, that they were getting health care before they became chronic, either mentally or physically, and became a huge burden on, on, on the state government and on their families. So we could get them preventative care, get them access. Now we've got to focus on cost. And that seems to be something that whether you're Republican or Democrat, you agree that the cost of health care is out of control. Without transparency and some other things that we want to do as a legislature, uh, we, we're just not going to affect the price. Well, it is a challenge. You know, I read one article that uh, spoke about how the Affordable Health Care Act gave more Montana residents access to health care. And that does what you're talking about. You want to nip things in the bud. Let's get some right. preventative things done. Let's catch cancer at stage zero instead of stage four. All these things that make good common sense for your health and for your health care costs. Sure. But then if socialized medicine moves away, what's the mechanics? What's the mechanism there to, to resolve that? And with so many unknowns, it's tough for a, an individual state to do do sure. maybe all the things you'd like to for your citizens. You're exactly right. We want people coming in the front door of the hospital and getting preventative care and getting checkups and screenings versus going to the emergency room when they're already in a terrible state and it's going to be five times more expensive. Uh, the folks that are covered by uh, the Medicaid bill that we ran last session, they were getting health care before. They were just getting it absolutely free and they were getting it through the emergency rooms. So we wanted to provide an avenue where they could come in the front door of the hospital. They would pay for part of their own care and we would keep them from becoming chronic. But ultimately, we want people to be able to pay for their own health care. That means they've got to have good jobs, and to have good jobs, they've got to be healthy, both mentally and physically. We want health care costs to reduce to the point where they can afford it, because socialized health care is not the solution. The solution is to make it affordable, create enough good jobs, people can go into those jobs, um, they can pay for their own health care, they can get hired by companies that provide it as a benefit, and then the state simply remains uh, responsible to care for those folks that can't care for themselves. That's our goal. Uh, the federal change is coming. Our, our session is not very well timed. Uh, we'll probably see very few of those changes incorporated before our session is scheduled to end. So as legislators, we are crafting a solution that will allow us to come back as changes in health care and other areas are made, and we would be able to change our state system to match the changes with the federal government. 
Certainly the funding mechanism is going to change. The mechanism for waivers is going to change. Um, we may not be able to provide coverage for all the folks that we provide coverage for now. And that's okay, but we really need to focus on the people that as a state government, we're there to protect the people that can't protect themselves. And so how are we going to spend the money? How many people can we cover? Um, ultimately, our state was the first to recognize that economic development and health care have to go hand in hand. Oh, yes. For someone to be in a job, oh, yes. be successful, move up the career ladder, mm -hmm. you can't be drug addicted. You have to be mentally and physically healthy. If you're not, despite whoever's fault it is, you're not going to be able to take care of yourself and your family. Oh, that's we have to have realize to they work hand in hand. Right. Yes, and then when you're employable, then those doors start to gradually sure. open. Well, we're, we're talking about the Trump administration. Uh, everyone's looking to see the changes as that uh, takes effect and move forward. I know you're watching that keenly. Um, and this is, of course, speculation. What do you think the new administration will mean for the average citizen in your state? Healthcare-wise, uh, I, I think uh, it's going to mean that the states are going to find themselves more in control of what we do with our healthcare dollars and what our healthcare policy is. Um, I think that's very positive. It means the people of the state need to come to the legislature, they need to talk to us, they need to help us craft a solution that's going to best serve the people. Um, no more will we see the one-size-fits-all mandates across the board, whether you're talking about the VA, you're talking about health care, you're talking about natural resources. You know, it just seems insane to us that the federal government has adopted one-size-fits-all policies across the board. If it's good for California, if it's good for Florida, if it's good for New York, it must be good for Montana. We're a frontier state. It never works. So we're excited that uh, President Trump seems very willing to end those policies and to say to states, you know how to best serve your population. You know how to best serve your state. You guys go do your job. Federal government is no longer going to set these mandates upon you. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time to come and talk with us and to bring your constituents up to date about what you're doing for them. And I'm very um, glad that you could come join us and explain these things to thank us. Thank you. It's great to have the opportunity. This is Ed Buttry. I'm Dana Cowley. And thank you for watching. This is Charter Local Edition. Charter Local Edition has been an exclusive presentation of Charter Communications. View all episodes at localeditiononline.com.